Hi everyone, I'm Don Dixon. Welcome back to our master class on a mechanics of fishing. Today we're going to continue our discussion on the controls in fishing. We established in our, over the last few weeks, uh, all of these areas of structure in the lake that we need to identify because most all of that water has no fish in it most of the time. So once we arrive at these areas of structure that we've identified, and we identified 17 different types of structure, once we arrive at these areas in the lake, we have to now get a lure down there somehow, some way, and catch a fish. There are some controls we need to consider when we start actually fishing. And we started that talk the other day and we established that there are really five things we really need to control. First was depth, second is speed, then comes size of the lure, the action of the lure, and the color of the lure. So there were basically five controls that we started out with. But we talked about the action of the lure, how it wiggles. And after a little bit of a discussion, we've decided to eliminate that from a worry of ours. Uh, it's not totally eliminated, but we treat it more as an adjunct to speed control. Uh, and we don't worry about how it wiggles. So we're sort of eliminating that from our worries on the water. So instead of having five things we need to consider now, five things to worry about, now we're down to only four. Today we're going to talk about two of those things. First, we're going to discuss the color of a lure. And the color of allure, probably, in all of my years of teaching, 35 years of giving clinics and teaching schools, probably the number one question, and I always ended all my classes with a long question period. I tried to answer every question that a fisherman had. And I can tell you, without any question, the number one thing that I've always been asked is, what's my favorite color? I mean, it's just part of fishing. Everybody asks the same thing. Do you have a favorite color? Or well, what color do you think is best? I asked Buck one time, what was the most often asked question that he got? What's his favorite color? Everybody asks the same thing. And I'm going to deal with it a little bit <clears throat> today uh, of the different colors and what's, what's all involved and find out if it's something that we need to worry about or not. Is it really a control? Well, we know for starters that you have to have light in, in order to have color. And most all light is absorbed in the first eight to 10 feet of all water. And by the time you reach sanctuary depths, 30, 35 feet, most all light is gone. So whatever the color is, uh, by the time it's downstairs, it's all black. It's all black to the fish. And over the last 10 years, we've been catching fish so deep, I can promise you, everything we've been catching look black to the fish. I can promise you that. But still it's something that everybody likes to talk about, the color of a lure. And everybody has a favorite color. It, it, there's no question about it. If you ask a thousand fishermen to have a favorite color, a thousand people will say yes. And they probably would be a rainbow of different colors in those answers. So everybody has their favorite color, and that's okay. But the truth is, most of the time, by the time you get downstairs, where we're running into most of our fish, there's no color. There's no more color. The last colors to go, they tell me, are the blues and the greens. Those are the last ones to fade out and all of a sudden become black in appearance. Uh, so it's something I don't worry that much about, but I can tell you everybody else does. They all talk about it. Everybody's got a favorite color. And, and guys will say to me in the clinic, I agree with everything you say except that one thing. I can promise you that chartreuse is the best color. And they'll want to argue with me, you know. And then I just sort of ask the questions. Well, you think chartreuse is the best? Oh, I know chartreuse is the best color. So, well. Does that mean that you use it a lot? Yeah, I sure do because it's the best color. Well, okay. Well, anytime you catch a fish, then you're catching a fish on a chartreuse colored lure, pretty much. So therefore, you have deduced from that the chartreuse is the best color. 
but it's the only color you ever use. So you see, you can't, there's a little flaw in that kind of thinking. You can't just use every color in the rainbow and not catch a fish and put a chartreuse on and catch a fish. Then you could say, well, I think chartreuse is the best color. Well, the truth is, I guarantee you every set of fishing partners, they've got, they've got stories they can tell where one color was catching and the other color wasn't. There's all kind of stories, and many of them true. There can be times in the shallower waters where we still have color, where there could tend to be, I hate to use the word preference, but I'll use it anyhow, there, there, there seemed to be a color preference. One color was catching and the other color wasn't. When they switched colors, one color was catching and one wasn't. Seemed to be a preference. Well, the truth is, a fish can't take a lure that he can't see. He's got to see it. And if you have every color in the rainbow, you're fishing at eight feet of water and all the fish at 30 feet, he can't take it. He can't catch, you can't catch your fish on your favorite color if you're not considering depth control, which is something we'll talk about later. So as a worry, I want to add a couple of things. There, are, there is a, 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 a light to have color, as we just talked about, but there's also a scientific truism that on the bright days, bright lures show up better. Silver, white, something like that. And on the dark days, and it's been both here this morning, uh, but on the dark days, darker lures actually show up better. Keep in mind, for a, lure, for a fish to take a lure, he's got to be able to see it. So there can be a time when you say, well, that silver lure with it is definitely a color preference. Well, it was that they could see it better in most all cases. Or you were sitting at the brake line and your partner was up on the flat. There are a lot of reasons that you could say it seemed to be a color preference, but in some cases, one lure will show up better than the other. So if under a certain light condition, light lures show up better, I want to use light lures. If on a dark condition, darker lures show up better, I want to use a dark lure. And anytime you're in doubt, you use one of the neutrals, which is the yellow, the brass, uh, there's a bunch of neutral colors. So. I always told fishermen, look, you, if you have a favorite color, use it. Bottom line, that's the deal. If you have something that makes you feel comfortable, use it. Don't let it be the determining factor in your thinking as to whether or not you're going to catch fish, whether it's something you have to control or not. It's not. And I'm going to give you a great example. Nobody knows this story. I don't think any, even any of my friends I ever mentioned it. Maybe I mentioned it to a few friends. But I'm going to tell you a little something on Buck, and I'll finish my little talk on the color of your lure. When I first started working for Buck, and I ended up talking Tommy Forensic into working with me to be working with Buck, we were traveling all over God's creation. Once he had some sort of some uh, uh, confidence in our ability to do it, we go off on these trips and, and fish different lakes and promote different areas and set up dealers with all the spoon plugs and the trolling equipment, all the things that Buck had for sale. And that's what kept us going, you know, the, the sales of that stuff. But we had to go in and promote these lakes. And we always had to have some really important person in the front of the boat. We always had a critic up there in the front of the boat. But when we were successful, then we get all the publicity and all of the stuff, the good stuff that would come from that. Now, I always wanted to put my best foot forward when I'm meeting somebody new that had the chance to promote us and so on and so forth. And that also meant rigging them up with a rod and reel and some lures. And when I pull out those lures, I didn't have any painted lures. And for about two years, we never had any polished or painted lures. Because this is something that most people don't know. Buck was a millionaire. But he was also the cheapest guy I ever met in my life. I mean, he did not want to spend. I used to kid him all the time. I said, you got the first nickel. No wonder you're rich. You got the first nickel you ever made. He just wouldn't spend money. He didn't like spending money. He wouldn't spend any money on promotion. And 
when you go out to dinner with him, it's a well done hamburger with 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 uh, mustard and, and and onion and nothing else. That was it. That was dinner. And when he was buying, you ate what he was eating. I mean, he was cheap. And a good example of color control and or his cheapness is he, I, I'll, I'll share this with you. For two years, when we go out on these big promotions, it didn't matter. We in Texas, we're all over God's creation. We had to have lures to fish with. And in this basement of his factory, he had what we called the call bucket. It was a big wash tub. And these brass lures are st stamped out first you know they're cut out and when they get cut out sometimes there'd be a little flaw and he wouldn't even stamp them and form them he'd just throw these culls in this big old bucket and when we were going to go on a trip he'd tell us to go down and pick out the best culls we could find so we'd pull out these things that he wasn't going to sell and he'd form them. He'd go form them like he formed the others. And he'd hand them over to us, all different sizes. Unpolished, ugly, dirty looking brass, unpolished, and never painted. Those are the lures we used for two years. And finally, I told him, I said, it's embarrassing. We're taking these guys, these dealers fishing. I got these old beat up things. You know, he said, yeah, but not. it's not changing the fact you're catching more fish than all the raiders and up there fishing facts magazine it doesn't seem to change that you're catching all the fish you need to catch and that's the most important thing i said no every now and then you got to look like you're successful buck i said please give us some painted lures so finally he ended up giving us some painted lures but i could tell you for two years most all the promotions we did in a two-year period we did with unpolished ugly looking beat up old looking throwaways but they, were, they would go to the right depth and they'd do all the things they're supposed to do. So that was a real lesson. Now, thinking back on it, I'm not sure whether that was just his way of proving to me. Remember I told you last time we talked, sometimes he would want to teach me a lesson without actually making it seem like he's teaching me a lesson. But after those two years were up, I never ever considered the color of a lure ever again. I knew it didn't matter. It's simple. It doesn't matter. And most of the time where we're catching fish, it surely doesn't matter. Everything black to the fish. But in the end, in all my clinics, when I ended up, I said, look, in fishing, confidence plays a big part. I'm confident in my fishing today, but mainly because of my ability to read a contour map, map and interpret structure, my presentation of lures, casting and trolling. I put in a lot of time, a lot of practice. I read a lot. I've studied. That's where my confidence comes from. A lot of fishermen today, their confidence is in the color of their lure. They only use one color. And boy, when you read somebody won a bass tournament one time, I mean, all you ever hear, the guy will talk for an hour and a half about it, it had to be a certain color of green. And, you know, he'll go all, all and on and on and on about the color of that bait, which is the reason he caught fish ridiculous and if there was such a thing as a fish having a favorite color could you imagine a fish that's ready to eat anything that comes by him all of a sudden sees this dirty brass spoon plug coming by and say oh I, I know them spoon plugs they're pretty good to eat they look really good but that's one of them ugly brass ones I think I'll sit around and wait for a chartreuse one to come by <laughs> come on folks that's not how fish operate. Color doesn't matter. But if you've got a favorite color, I'm asking you, please use it. Give yourself that confidence. If you want to think there is such a thing as a preferred color, use it. And if not, use the Don Dixon guideline to color. When choosing a lure, on a bright day, use a bright lure. Silver, white, something bright. On a dark, cloudy day, the days we like to go fishing, use a dark lure. Anytime you're in doubt, use a neutral, yellow, brass, polished brass. You can probably guess, brass is one of my favorites, because <laughs> that's all I ever used for years, because that's all Buck would give me. Uh, but at any rate, 
that's pretty much the hand rule that we use for color. And then I say as a control in fishing, we started with five. Depth, speed, size, color, action. We eliminated action from a worry, from a consideration, and we're treating it as speed. That's the, the, the clip notes are treat action as speed, and you're good to go. Secondly, color. Bright day, bright lure, dark day, dark lure, when in doubt, use a neutral. And don't worry about it from that point on. So in my mind, I've eliminated color from a concern. We're trying to boil this thing down, this control thing down, so that when we go out there and we find that structure that we now know what we're looking for, we go find it, we need to know what we need to control to catch fish. And we're just eliminating color from a worry. Don't have to worry. So now we started with five, now we only have three left. Depth, speed, and size. So let's talk about the size of the lure. Most people think, when, when you ask them about size, they think in terms of, well, if I'm going to be catching some little bluegills, I need a wee little lure, you know, a little bait. And if I'm going to go musky fishing, I need them big old suics, you know, big old thing. The truth is, a fish, like a bass, good example, he'll eat anything as big as he is, and sometimes bigger. They have no none of this idea that I can only have, you know, a certain eat a certain size of bait. There is no such thing. So keep that in mind. And when we think about size as a control in fishing, it's easy to sort of see that it'd be very hard to be working a big deep diving 800 spoon plug in two feet of water. It doesn't work very well. Or to be using a little 500 spoon plug or a little topwater bait or something like that when you're out there fishing in 35 feet of water. Small baits in deep water, even a deep diving lure, a small bait. Deeper you go in any body of water, the less light there is. Get down to 30, 35 feet, most all light's gone. And a fish can't take a lure he can't see. First, he's got to see it. He can become aware of it by feeling it or hearing it through his lateral lines. That's how fish locate, help to locate. So he becomes aware of your lure. He feels it. And, but in the end, before he actually takes it, he's got to see it. So if you expect him to see that little 16th ounce jig down in 35 feet, that's pretty hard. Pretty hard to do. Just as hard as it would be to work big, really big, cumbersome baits up in the shallow water. So I like to consider size in what depth am I fishing. It's one of my guidelines. Smaller lures in the shallow and the deeper we go, the bigger the lures get. Want the fish to be able to see the lure, knowing that they'll strike anything as big as they are. All fish, they're very voracious creatures. I can't tell you. I've been fishing with 800 spoon plugs many times, catching a little sauger this big. Down here in 45 feet of water. I've been working on wire line with rat uh, uh, in my wire line river rig setup. I'm using a jumbo, the biggest magnum rapala they make. Sometimes catch, catch walleyes this big. They'll strike anything as big as they are or bigger. So when we're looking at size, when I'm going downstairs, I want a big bait. When I'm working up in the shallows, I'm working with smaller baits. There are a couple of exceptions to that. If I'm purposely in the late fall when I know I've got shallow movements of musky and northern, I did a little tape on it one time, uh, where we're throwing some big suics or something in the shallow water, relatively shallow. Uh, there are some exceptions. But bottom line is the control in fishing, smaller lures in the shallows, bigger lures the deeper we go. Now. When it comes to size, is it something that we should worry about? Is it something we consider a control? No, we, we control our depths, help us to control our depth. But is it, so it is a control. Theoretically, it's a control. But is it something we have to worry about? No, we have small, we have medium, we have large. We have all of the above. We have all sizes. But again, I could be using a really big lure in the shallows and all the fish are in 40 feet of water, I'm not going to catch one. 
Uh, in other words, I'm looking for big muskie. So I use the biggest lure I can find, and I'm fishing up there in the weeds in six feet of water, and all the, all the muskie in the lake are down 40 feet. Or like on that roadbed we talked about a couple of weeks ago up in Shenango Reservoir. Uh, and and, and you, know, you can't catch any fish. It's not a control. It only helps us to control our depth. So now that we've talked about size, color, and action, we pretty much can eliminate those three things from a real concern. Now, if you want the, all the, the scientific, terrific, and beautiful, intellectual, total uh, details of those subjects, get Buck's material. <laughs> And read it but if you want my cliff notes if you want my here's the quick here's the quick study action treat it as speed only how fast does it go from here to there not how fast it wiggles not important two color got a favorite color use it if you don't have a favorite color use bright days uh, on bright days you use bright lures on dark days you use dark lures and when you're in doubt, use neutrals, brass and the yellows and those neutral colors. And when it comes to size, treat it as an aid in actually helping us to create the number one control really in fishing, which is depth. Smaller lures in the shallows, bigger lures downstairs. Now, Buck says in his material, uh, he calls these all five of these things that we mentioned at the beginning controls. He even considers size, color, and action as a control. But after his long uh, session describing those three things, he too eliminates them from a concern or a worry with a few little hand rules that we use. And that leaves us with the two things that are the main controls. And these next two things, depth and speed, they're so important that we're going to spend quite a long time talking about the two real controls in fishing, depth and speed. And as we move forward in our study, even into the presentation of lures and weather and water and all, everything else we're going to talk about, there'll be this underlying theme. Everything will always revert back to depth and speed. If you're catching fish or not catching fish, depth and speed. In fact, when we're talking about these five controls that we started out with, once you get to the end, and we'll get to the end, I'll say it today and then I'll say it the next time after we talk about depth and after we talk about speed. And this is what Buck used to say. And if he said it once to me, he said it 10,000 times. So this is one of the things that you remember. All fishing success, all fishing success, and all fishing failure can be described and defined in two words, depth and speed. If you were successful, depth and speed was right. If you were not successful, if you weren't catching fish, Either your depth or your speed was off, because both of those things have to be uh, right at the same time. Simultaneously, your depth and speed must come together in order to catch fish. So all fishing success, Buck says, and all fishing failures can be defined in those two terminologies, depth and speed control. And we're going to do a couple of sessions uh, complete with... Uh, Many, many different uh, examples of the importance and, and uh, the overall effect of depth control and speed control. And we're going to leave those other three that we just talked about over the last couple of sessions. Size, color, and action. We're going to consider them aids and not true controls in fishing. So the next time we get together, we're going to enter into this really a, 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 a rather in-depth study on depth and speed control.
that's what's needed. So till the next time, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We appreciate you. See you next time.